Hi, I'm Chester Osborne, fourth generation winemaker at Darenberg here in McLaren Vale, South Australia. And I'm gonna give you a tour through the Darenberg Cube, uh, through the weird and crazy things, art pieces we've put in there. But first of all, we're gonna have a look at some of the things around the Darenberg Cube. And so behind me, we've got Archer's Art Gallery, some really interesting uh, uh, automata art. Crazy, uh, weird things moving around. We've got the stables here, which was built in the 1880s, where we, where you pick up wine whenever you buy wine here, or you can just go in there and buy it there as you like. Uh, with lovely, great chiffoniers all everywhere in there. It's really quite quirky. Uh, as we move across to beautiful view to the south, we've got Greg Johns, one of the greatest sculpture artists of Australia. His uh, 20 uh, retrospective pieces of his uh, works that he's done. Uh, and then there's Polly's and Darry's Veranda Restaurant, the original old homestead that was built in 1880. Uh, we've got the, uh, the fallen cube here. So this is one piece of the Darenberg cube that fell out when we made it. Well, joking really. <laughs> there's actually a, bo a bore there and a pumping shed and whatever. And it was a really ugly looking shed. So I said, oh, let's have a fallen cube. And when you drive up, you can actually see the, uh, the glass on the top and the pattern on the top. And when you look at the cube, which we will, uh, you can see how there's one that's missing. Although we've got the glass pulled out right now, to, but you can see where there's no pattern. That's the, uh, where the fallen cube is. Now, you might also notice that we've got some Salvador Dali art here. Uh, Dance of Time 2 there. Um, uh, there's actually uh, 25 sculptures that we have in place. This one here, the Triumphant Elephant, which uh, has only just arrived. The first time a, uh, this has actually been in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, these are art pieces that uh, Salvador Dali started making in the 1970s, and he did limited production runs of, uh, of uh, uh, about 29 pieces. And uh, gradually they're selling out, there's 25 left. When they're gone, they're gone, basically. And uh, we've got another one here, Nobility of Time, which, uh, of course, uh, uh, he, he was obsessed with the bending of time and time being not a fixed thing or a fixed unit. It actually moves, uh, our understanding of time, of course, moves with, uh, with our excitement. <laughs> and when we're bored, it's slow. When we're really excited, it's fast. So anyway, let's keep trying, trying to be excited. So we're walking through the uh, Movedra vineyard here that was first planted to Movedra in 1880. And uh, it's, uh, we've already done harvest. Uh, you can see the leaves are still on there, but uh, the fruit is gone. And uh, um, the vines are grown here organically and biodynamically. We're actually the largest biodynamic grower in Australia. So this is uh, where we put cow horns in the ground, fill them up with poo, put them in the ground for several months, and then spread that around, dilute it, spread it around on the soil, and it, uh, it increases the microflora in the vineyard and uh, makes better wine, basically. So you get uh, more of the soil character. We don't do any cultivation. We don't do herbicides. We uh, uh, only mow to reduce competition. Um, we don't fertilize with nitrogen, these sort of things. Now you might be able to hear this sound, it's fairly low, but uh, this is weather for the vines. So if you have a look to the, uh, my right hand side over here, you can see a little weather station. There's not a lot happening in the weather here. It's a beautiful day as you can see uh, in, uh, in autumn. And, and so it actually measures eight parameters of weather and turns it into sound uh, in real time in this really euphoric sort of deep eerie sound as you walk up to see the uh, see Darenberg. We've got some gnomes over here, Stephanie the gnome with rose-coloured glasses, which is our rosé. Um, unfortunately, someone stole the rose-coloured glasses, so they're uh, blue now. Now, when you walk in here, you have to walk in staggering and it's from side to side. I'll show you how. So it's going to be like this. And, um, and you keep looking at the, uh, the winery. You can see the pictures of the winery here, the open fermenters and the basket press and the barrel rows, and, uh, and so uh, this is called reverse perspective art. So what happens is that it actually disappears, the back becomes the front, which is quite quirky. Um, now uh, this introduces the Alternate Realities Museum, because when you have a glass of wine, and I have a glass of wine, then we have a different reality, uh, depending on what we know in wine and what we like in wine. So all of these objects in here all have different meanings, just like the Darren Cube is a toy sitting in the middle of the vineyard, and the reverse perspective art. There's a peep show here. 
There's a hope that we, we separated the region in 19 districts here, which uh, uh, is another alternate reality that didn't happen. Uh, this is, represents this biodynamic bull, even though it's a cow. But uh, Rudolf Steiner created uh, biodynamic uh, viticulture and farming back in the 1920s. And he didn't really use any science, so I'm not sure how he came up with it. So I've got the cow here hugging a polygraph or lie detector. <laughs> it was quite just for fun. And uh, we've got, uh, you know, no, we don't use insecticides, we don't use Roundup, we don't use fertilizers. Uh, try not to irrigate if we can, and in dry, really dry years we have to, and we don't cultivate. So there's, uh, there's it's, that's our viticulture. Um, the winemaking part is uh, off actually, uh, the little fermenter that we have here is gone, so I can't show you that, but normally it'd be here when we're actually open. It's the world's first fully automated natural winemaker. But uh, come back and see that sometime. Now we're going into a room which is a little bit like a model of a fermenter. We're inside the, underneath the cap of the ferment and there are 40 faces in here uh, that uh, are a personal collection of mine over the years and, and some of them are more figurative bodies, whatever. Uh, and so they're uh, representing the different person, people that you could have doing the fermenter. So you can see actually through the cap, well, the balls are gone right now, but through the cap there's uh, someone foot treading the fermenter. So we foot tread all of our fermenters just once through the fermentation. Everything's done in small batches of two to five tonne and we keep them all separate which uh, makes the most of every little vineyard We you see all the little nuances and differences all the time. Um, so there's another little video thing there, we won't worry about that. There's, uh, there's uh, too much to see in here. Uh, so over here, we, this whole uh, arrangement here is uh, the four generations of, uh, of Osborns. So we start off over here with my great grandfather with his um, uh, inkwell and writing pad, a letter how he bought the vineyard in 1911 and how much he paid, 24,000 pounds. Glasses were very small and then you know, phones were different, of course. Uh, flowers, fruit and rocks representing the wine here. Then my grandfather's typewriter, uh, he's writing a letter to his wife how he's borrowed £2,000 to build the winery. He talks about the fermenters and everything. One of his wines here as well, Bandara Vineyards, we were known as then. And then we changed the name uh, to Darenberg in uh, the 1950s. So here's a, a bottle of Darenberg with a letter my father wrote to a graphic artist to help him back in the 50s to design the Red Stripe label. Uh, again, um, uh, shirts are changing and, uh, and uh, glasses getting slightly bigger. Fax machines are introduced, uh, breathos, uh, iPods, uh, mobile phones, um, big glasses, loud shirts, <laughs> more fruits and flowers, um, and, a, and a computer here from 1994, which would, when we're open naturally has a whole wording on there as well. And we have normally playing here Oppenheimer, the father of the nuclear bomb. And uh, it's the first recording of the very first nuclear bomb going off in the 1940s in New Mexico, in America. And hence we've got the bomb here to represent that too. And this is all here because we are talking about the Anthropocene Epoch which is uh, Menthea, uh, a hot climate variety from Spain that uh, would never have ripened here 30 years ago, but now it does because we're, everything's ripening earlier and you know, climate change. So uh, uh, we've been in the Halocene Epoch for 14,000 years and now scientists are suggesting we're going into a whole new epoch that uh, is the Anthropocene Epoch created by humans, hence Anthro. And a whole layer of radiation was put down when they started nuclear bomb testing and that's the beginning of the Anthropocene Epoch with all the uh, dust and everything, plastic and everything else landing there. And we've got all the measures of climate change here as well uh, to uh, show you uh, that, uh, how scary it is. There's a lovely lady here having a little rest in a fermenter. Obviously she's been foot treading a bit much and she's decided to, uh, to have a drink instead with the flower, tasting the flowers, fruit and rocks. And there's the, uh, the crusher, uh, old pump here, old press. There's the uh, anthora. And this is picking in the 1930s in the Claraval uh, with uh, horses and crawler tractors uh, and picking some Grenache actually. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll keep going. There's, uh, there's a lot to see here. So uh, we have on my, uh, this side here, we have uh, the Shroud of Christ, uh, Turin, made of opals. It's a bit hard to see up close, but his face is there and, uh, and uh, it's representing, 
either birth of a wine or death as well, because uh, uh, you could, it's very dangerous uh, foot treading fermenters because of the CO2. Speaking of uh, being dangerous, this is a video going right now. We're now inside a fermenter in amongst the cap. And you can see here, uh, someone is actually foot treading the fermenter um, quite fast. Um, actually, uh, it's sped up three times, but this is the speed I would like them to work. Um, so this is like we're underneath the fermenter. We've got all these edgy little bits hanging down of wood because this is representing uh, uh, getting more edginess into the wine by foot treading, a little bit extra tannin or whatever. We've got this uh, rather interesting uh, uh, scale here, giant scale holding up uh, uh, the head of this cat and the skeleton on the other end. So we're balancing up, the, uh, making a $200 wine, the Arthur Zagoraphobic cat. And you can see here the, uh, the cat running along, uh, trying to keep up with me. Arthur's agoraphobia is a fear of being forgotten. And I had a cat called Audrey Hepburn, who I called Ordinary instead of Audrey, Audrey and she had a fear of being forgotten, she always walked with me. And this is an extinct Sumatran tiger's head. Uh, so he also doesn't want to be forgotten. And uh, uh, so when you're f doing a fermenter to make great wine, there's a chance of death, hence the skeleton. And in the middle I've got a candle, oxygen meter, and dead canary, which are the things that we've used to, over the years to measure whether it's actually okay to go inside the fermenter. Uh, we do, the video also has confined space training in there too, which people get pretty scared. You see this little guy there crawling into a little door like this into a black abyss. So we're going to have a look now at uh, a little art piece I put together called uh, the Derelict Vineyard. Uh, you can see the Derelict Vineyard uh, Grenache there, that's the, uh, the wine. He's been knocking them off obviously. Um, this this Dero from the, from the homeless person from the street. This actually also represents the fact that I in America have been refused service uh, about eight times going into stores because they thought I was a homeless person. <laughs> Hair like this, what would you think? Uh, so I've been told to walk, you know, here's my travel bag, TAA, a uh, defunct airline, and um, he's got his dog and a few normal possessions, uh, told to walk, as I mentioned, and uh, he's, there's a little uh, dryer, a uh, clothes dryer in the back because I, I was left out to dry while I was being uh, told to leave, but uh, there's lots of uh, quirky arts like that. You can see this lady here. She represents the four wise monkeys. Every now and then her arms move, robotic arms, and she does uh, the four wise monkeys. So see no evil, uh, hear no evil, speak no evil, and then she holds out a glass, drink no evil, because <laughs> life's too short to drink bad wine. We go into the lift to uh, go up to the next floor. And so you can see the lift is essentially a vineyard. So we're in uh, the oldest vineyard of Grenache in the Vale. It's uh, planted in 1912, uh, beautiful old vines. Um, uh, you can even see the geology at the bottom. There's uh, uh, the red brown earth on top of the limestone. So it's well, pretty much a terra rossa soil here, um, which is fantastic for viticulture. All right, we'll come out here and uh, wander onto the first floor. Oh, nearly, nearly lost you. <laughs> so, on my right hand side is the kitchen, which is uh, obviously closed right now because we're in uh, COVID time. Uh, uh, but uh, speaking of COVID time, I actually have a display here that uh, relates to the uh, COVID-19 uh, um, virus, but it's also called uh, the... Uh, Apotropic Triscadiophobia. So Triscadiophobia is a fear of number 13. This comes from a single vineyard wine from 13 acres. Uh, so if you drink this wine, hence you can see the little uh, gun here filling the glass with 13 little swizzle sticks. Uh, if you drink this wine, then you'll forget it comes from 13. Of course, we've got the bat here representing COVID. Uh, it's, uh, it's all about putting a, a hand grenade in a fuel, a fuel cell. Well, it's gonna be end up in tears, isn't it? Um, we've got over here, one of my most popular wines, the Dead Arm Chiraz. Uh, which uh, is probably the most sought after and age-worthy wines that we make. And uh, this is actually called, Who Are You Gonna Call With Your 19 Dead Arms? So <laughs> I've got like Ghostbusters sort of uh, effect here. Uh, and there's 19 dead arms in here. We, uh, and on this, uh, on, on the coat you can see around here, 
There are uh, arms I've stuck on here from dolls. Uh, so this is a, a coat of arms. And the original coat of arms is actually on the front here. But this is the, arm, the coat of arms we had for the first 20 years. But a, a family in Europe got upset with, uh, with us using their crest of arms, the Arenberg family. And so we came up with a new uh, uh, crest, uh, which is the one we've been using ever since the late 70s. Uh, but there's dead arms all through this. Uh, and it's a, it's a rat uh, trap to represent that uh, you need to hide away and lock away the, uh, the, your dead arm for longer because it, it looks much better when it's 10 and 20 years old and can age for 40 years. We've got a sheep here, well, quasi sheep. She's, uh, she's half human and half sheep. You can see her, her teeth here and uh, little hoofs and whatever. And we use sheep in the vineyard to mow during winter. And so here she is between two vines, Fred and Frederica. Here's a vine that was planted in 1880 and she's a layer that was made 40 years later. So they were connected in life, and here they are together, still in death. And uh, they're quite, quite fun and sexy. Um, we've got another uh, little installation over here, which is called uh, Paying Homage to Italian Grape Varieties. And um, these, these are like living beings. Wine is like a living being. It's maturing like a person in a way, getting better with age. And uh, so here you see them standing on the home in the, the little candy uh, Italian wine bottles, uh, standing on the home. And they've got the home of the penis, so paying homage to Italian grape varieties. Uh, this has, it makes reference to the wine I have called the Seno Silica Phobic Cat. It's a Sagrantino and Cinso. Uh, Senosilicophobia is a fear of an empty glass. You can see the cat here with his empty glass. And uh, um, we all suffer from that actually in this industry. And I had a cat called Booze, whose real name was non-alcoholic Booze. And we called him Booze for short. Uh, but he, so he thought he could drink, but he wasn't allowed to drink because he's non-alcoholic Booze. So he suffered from Senosilicophobia all his life. Um, there's uh, my father and I over here. Uh, that, that's the more intelligent one of, uh, of me, a uh, copy of me. You get more sense out of that one. Uh, and uh, I'm in an armour because I need an armour to get this whole building up. And my father's fishing because he says that's his main thing in life. Uh, down here I've got a self-portrait that I did uh, of myself uh, dressed up as Willy Wonka. It was in all the magazines uh, when we opened the Jaramboo Cube. And uh, I've used 6,000 little caricatures of our label names here, uh, we commissioned uh, 30, or 70 of the top cartoonists of Australia to draw caricatures of each of the label names. So you can see here the, uh, the Cetosilicophobic Cat there, there's uh, the Fissifrate Dipsomaniac, and there's the Copper Mine Road. There's, uh, so all, all uh, 76 wines are represented on this uh, little uh, uh, mosaic of, uh, of uh, uh, caricatures. We're going to go into the men's toilet now. We've got a little cartoon of the dead arm that we walked through first of all. And uh, this is the place that most people um, uh, come in and film. It's the most filmed part of the Darabur Cube. There's usually women in here, uh, but of course we're closed right now. And you can see the, uh, the urinals are quite crazy and quirky. So we have uh, Sardin Napali in here, one of our single vineyard Shiraz wines. And the Money Spider, a Roussan we have. This is the Anthropocene. Uh, uh, no, no, this is actually amaranthine. I'm going to write a minute. The colour purple and everlasting. And of course, the uh, ant in an army tank's everlasting. And again, a few more other characters over here of, uh, of our wines. Uh, some people get a bit of stage fright, but it's, <laughs> it's more fun than anything. Um, and the, uh, the mirrors here represent a big bunch of grapes uh, as, you, uh, um, as you're in there looking at yourself, uh, uh, watching your hands. Um, we might have a little look over at the uh, uh, pixies in the uh, disabled toilet. But for, we're walking past the broken fish plate, that's to be non block. These are fish plates from the harvester. And there's a slow mo that goes on there of a broken fish plate bottle of wine smashing into a, a fish plate and breaking it. It's quite, quite quirky. And uh, so here we are uh, in the disabled toilet, um, ambulant toilet, whatever it's called. Uh, and these are all the pixies that are on our labels for, of our amazing sites. So these are all $100 wines, little components of the dead arm. I uh, kept six barrels separate and then some, three of them were Grenache, so 20 Shiraz and three Grenache. And you can see uh, all the uh, different uh, fruit mat up, up in the top corner up there. Uh, and uh, there's a guy asleep there for the Fissifrate Dipsomaniac, any vigorous alcoholic, he's passed out. 
there's an eight iron with a golf club there. There's little Venice with the oar. And Apotropic Triscadiophobia guy in the corner down the bottom by the toilet with the, with the, uh, with the cross that's sort of quite quirky that it's actually where the toilet is and it's representing what's actually going on in the toilet to a certain degree, I suppose. All right, we're going to go up to uh, the next floor and, uh, and have a look at uh, what's going on in the, uh, in the middle floor of the, uh, the Derby Cube. So it's five storeys high, the building. Um, so jump in. Um, uh, so the floor you can see here is actually made of barrel staves. So they're all curved and, uh, and uh, which is uh, uh, just uh, again relating to wine. Everything in the building relates to wine and relates to uh, Darabug wine in particular. And, and so uh, we, it's, um, it's quite a journey into uh, Darenberg uh, uh, in an artistic expression way. So here we have a uh, woman of time, uh, Salvador Dali. We have, uh, what is it, 25 sculptures in total of, uh, of Dali uh, here that are all for sale. Um, and uh, they're, uh, they're all very beautiful. He's a pretty amazing guy. And we've got about uh, 15 paintings by him as well. And we even have the video that he made where a collaboration between him and Walt Disney um, and uh, which was actually never released for 40 or 50 years because it was uh, the Disney thought it was too way out was didn't really fit uh, for kids and uh, and it was a bit spooky and death like but it's really wild actually he used to uh, have a look at it um, so yeah we've got all, lots of time clocks again and uh, uh, dancers and uh, 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 slaying dragons and whatever has uh, as Dali did, and uh, almost like uh, people from outer space, some of the faces and things that he did with them. I love the space elephant here. Um, he loved elephants and he sort of had them with giraffe legs, which was quite quirky, but uh, uh, they're, uh, they're all fun. The woman, the flame, uh, is lovely too. She's on fire and she's obviously a lot going on inside her, uh, <laughs> thinking about stuff, obviously. The horse you can have for a million bucks. Uh, which is a horse saddled with time, of course, uh, which uh, is really cool. Um, we've got on the other side here works by Charles Billich, who is one of the top surrealist artists of Australia. He's, uh, he painted this 84 years old, only a couple of years ago, uh, of the Darenberg Cube, and you can see he's got Salvador Dali here, he's even got myself actually in there, and, uh, and people are going off with the umbrellas on the roof. We didn't put the umbrellas up today, but uh, in uh, hot weather we have all these retractable black umbrellas on the roof that shade the building. Of course, in, say, in winter it's actually quite nice to get the sun in there and get all the heat from that as well. Uh, again, more uh, art pieces from uh, from uh, Dali, and we'll keep uh, wandering through. There's, uh, there's a lot to see. We do uh, wine tasting experiences here where you can blend your own version of the dead arm, and, uh, or, or just a vertical of dead arms, or you can do varietals. And so they happen in here, or other, other parts of the building. There's quite a lot of places where we, can, uh, where we do uh, little tastings uh, uh, to uh, have some fun, they're really popular and you get to take a bottle of wine home and you get a certificate saying that you're actually a winemaker when you blend your own version of the dinner. Um, and so here we have uh, an art piece I put together called Balanced Grapes Make Balanced Wines Without Any of These Additives. So you can see the scale here, which is measuring uh, more or less uh, balanced. Uh, um, so we don't add anything to our wine. So no, they're vegan. So there's no pork crackling or beef jerky. There's no uh, crustaceans, no fish, no mollusks, no peanuts, no milk, no eggs, no grains, no nuts, no mustards. And none of these things are added to our wines. Well, of course, no, I would add all these crazy weird things, but uh, it just uh, exaggerates the, uh, the, uh, the experience of, uh, of what we do. Uh, we've got a snail here with wings. Love this, uh, love this one. Uh, it's called Snail and Angel. So uh, it, it, this was the slowest one to get here, pardon the pun. <laughs> it's, uh, it's the last uh, one that we've put in, actually. Uh, uh, homage to fashion. Well, she's not actually wearing anything, but uh, I, I quite like her fashion. <laughs> um, I'm actually wearing uh, one of my favourite shirts, actually, which I bought from Soho in London. And uh, I'm actually doing a clothing label as well, which is going to come out uh, hopefully later in, uh, in the year. 
Um, so a few more Salvador Dali art pieces. Uh, we might uh, keep moving along um, and uh, have a look at the, uh, the next floor. Um, we, have, we do have a art piece here. Um, the, uh, there's small offices in here. Um, and this has actually got uh, lots of drippers in there. And, uh, and so sometimes you do need irrigation to get the, uh, the flowers the fruit and the rocks. So, um, and then there's all these crazy puzzle things because the cube is a puzzle and, and all, you know, we're near the sea and there's crabs for the hermit crab and all different wines and labels are represented in there, which is quite quirky. We're gonna go, we're gonna walk up the stairs uh, through here. And um, it's like a hall of mirrors in here. Um, which you can be reflecting on what wines you've been drinking when you've been in the building. Either uh, red wines, so there's clusters of red lights and then clusters of white lights, and so either white grapes or red grapes you've been drinking. And then you can see all of these uh, uh, beautiful uh, paintings here, they're, they're all the caricatures of our label names that are represented here. This floor actually has the, uh, the, like the dead arm and the, uh, uh, the cop mine road, uh, which are two of our icons, and the third icon, Einstein. But all the rest are, uh, are amazing sites, single vineyard wines. Um, so we'll keep going up. Uh, it gets a bit busy here sometimes with all these mirrors. Uh, but uh, just have a drink, you'll solve the problem. Uh, so here we are now, uh, we've got uh, all the glasses for the Darenberg Cube uh, restaurant, which of course is closed right now, and, uh, and a quirky art piece that only lines up in one position in the building. And, uh, and all of these artifacts here are quite quirky. Uh, um, uh, um, different cultures represented here from Papua New Guinean, Aboriginal, Indian, African. Uh, to represent that the food that we create is not from one culture, it's multicultural. And so there's masses and masses of them everywhere. We've got uh, some sample bottles from the 2015 vintage, which uh, uh, have no sulfur dioxide in them, so they're just doing crazy things. Uh, and uh, and uh, I've oxidized, most of these were red wines. And uh, they're being held between uh, the staves of a big vat, and this is the tartar that falls out from the wine, the wine diamonds that, uh, that is, uh, uh, deposited inside the vat. Uh, we also have uh, here uh, the Lucky Lizard. So this is uh, the wine, the Lucky Lizard. You can see the lizard roll getting through the rollers of the crusher and coming out alive. Um, and that's why it's a Lucky Lizard. Uh, there it's of course a dragon uh, because the lizards that get through the rollers of the crusher and come out alive are bearded dragons. And uh, so here is the beard and the dragon. It's actually a barbecue that you can take the top off and uh, put some hot coals in there from the back and, uh, and uh, cook, your, cook your food, which is uh, quite uh, uh, quirky. We're gonna go upstairs uh, again and uh, have a look. Quirky uh, guy over here. Um, so um, we're uh, now heading up to the top floor of the Darabu Cube and um, you can see actually the seats. I've got these really amazing chairs with lots of colour because I wanted to uh, really make a statement and create a conversation when you're sitting in them. They really bring yourself alive. And uh, it's, uh, it's got uh, contrasting with the white floor and the white pattern on the building everywhere. So uh, the pattern in the building moves into the building by 600 mil and there's a gap between the glass and the uh, cupboards, and I have uh, one kilometre of LED light that goes all, follows the pattern everywhere. So at night time, it's really bizarre, really beautiful. There's no direct lights, everything is hidden in the whole building. And the ceiling is all uh, the same pattern as well. You can see the umbrella that's not up, up there. They, they fold right down, so they hide away. Um, so uh, the bars here, we uh, have uh, uh, a big, uh, uh, glass, well, four glass bars here. Oh, I'm getting puffed. So this is actually melted over a grapevine. Uh, so this is Cabernet Sauvignon, and this is Grenache, the Shiraz, and there's uh, um, Montepulciano. And yeah, there's also a lady swimming along, uh, which uh, it's actually easier to see from a distance. So if we look over at that bar over there, uh, can you see the, uh, the lady swimming along? Um, and uh, She's, uh, her job is to mix up the yeast, so it's a bit of a fog, 
So she's mixing up the yeast in the uh, in the white juice that's just been uh, just been uh, racked and uh, and clear white juice, and so she's mixing it all up and uh, and uh, uh, so that it can start fermenting. She seems to uh, be uh, doing this all the time and never, never quite mixes it up properly, but uh, she's quite fun. The uh, the bars here are the shape of lips. They've got all, all glass, it's like an aquarium, uh, but uh, shaped of a lip. So this is like the top lip. And the other side bar is the bottom lip. Uh, behind here we have the teeth, um, which is uh, uh, obviously black, uh, white with black lines. And then the hoses are the tongue, and the lift shaft is the esophagus. So this is representing we're tasting wine through our lips, teeth, exciting our tongue with that bright colour, and then uh, going down our gullet, basically. So there's some quirky doors in here as well. So I'll just go out and have a look outside the, uh, the uh, uh, northern part of the of the, the kid. It's nice and bright out here. Beautiful day. Oh, there's some customers that have come along. That's pretty quirky. <laughs> Hopefully they didn't wander in. <laughs> um, the first vines in South Australia were part, planted in the 1830s over the hill, just so that where you're looking, over those hills. And then uh, 1860s, they planted over the other side of this scrub over here. This vineyard was planted in the 1880s. And all the development for the next 100 years happened through this way, basically, uh, to the east, and so um, uh, more inland. Uh, and those hills are the Adelaide Hills district there. So we'll, uh, we'll wander through, we'll, we'll go and have a look at the other half of the view, the other side. The Darabur Cube, I uh, came up with the idea back in 2003, presented a model to my father, he uh, and his brother and sister in a board meeting, they thought I was crazy and it'll never happen. I think they still think I'm crazy, but it did actually happen, of course. Uh, and uh, but it, uh, we started building in 2015, which is actually quite lucky that we uh, that we held off so long because in 2010, when we got building approval, we were going to do it then. We we couldn't have built it like this because you can't get double tempered big sheets of glass until around 2014. So now it's basically all one big sheet of glass with a, with a pattern put on the side. We would have had to have this as a little window and then sometimes they're even quirky little smaller windows and it probably would have leaked. So uh, it, uh, it worked out uh, very well. The other thing is, is that if we tried to get uh, building approval in 2015 for this building, we wouldn't have been able to because the energy codes changed about 10% every year for quite a while from 2010 to 2015, so it wouldn't have, uh, that wouldn't have got approval. So we are very fortunate that it, uh, that it happened this way. Again, you can see uh, my uh, friend here. It actually looks a lot like my partner Kath, actually. I'm not quite sure if it is or not. I didn't ask, actually, who the model was. But uh, we'll go out this other, other uh, way out here. So, um, the amazing day today. My kids are out there pruning actually today, and uh, they said it's uh, they're getting sunburned, but it's, uh, but it's really beautiful, and the birds chirping and whatever. So, if we look over to, to the east again, so this is where we were looking before to the east, and where we where the vines were planted right up until about 1980, and then uh, 1980s they planted these foothills across to the Adelaide Hills region there. Uh, right over to uh, that other side, to Wollonga, way off in the distance where you're just uh, looking at now. Uh, you can see McLaren Vale, the little township in the, uh, now in the middle of the, the vineyards here. And, uh, and actually all the 1990s it was planted across to the sea and all the way right down to Selix Beach, which is uh, quite a way down there. It's actually one degree hotter over there than it is where we are here. It's about the same temperature as Shadowlift to Pap over there, and whereas we're about halfway between uh, the uh, uh, Shadowlift to Pap and Cote Roti in the northern Rhine, so we get to quite uh, lovely elegance and character. Look, someone's left a glass and a bottle for me. That's nice. Well, a dead arm. If I these, uh, these claws are a little bit tricky to open wine with sometimes, uh, but we've got the, uh, the 2016 dead arm, which uh, is really just starting to really uh, look beautiful. Still very young and youthful. Big, lovely licorice characters. Uh, yeah, really lovely spices and fragrance. A lot of earth. Really, I love that earth character. You can smell the, the limestone and the sandstone and 
the different clays and, and then the colder parts of McLaren Vale, the blue at spring sands, giving perfume, floweriness and elegance and, and juiciness and, uh, and you know, there's a really good structure in here. Hold on. Got to squeeze a, a, um, a drink in. Oh yeah, that's actually really good. I've been drinking the 17 lately, but, so it's good to have a look at the older vintage right now. Um, so the sea has a big influence on what happens here. We get uh, cooling sea breezes at uh, three o'clock in the afternoon when it's a hot day. And then we get, the sea is also to the south, uh, about half an hour's drive, and we get really uh, massive winds in the evenings from there and off these hills, and it cools the whole region down, which makes it quite a special region because we get quite a big diurnal variation in the middle of summer. And that's actually quite uh, unusual being near the sea. So right against the sea, it's maritime. And then only 10 kilometres inland, you're actually already uh, quite continental. Uh, and we're in the rain shadow also of the uh, of Adelaide Hills. So when a storm in summer comes down, big monsoons, they'll dump on northern South Australia, Adelaide Hills, and then we're in the shadow and we don't get dumped on in, in summer. So it's why McLaren Bar makes some of the greatest wines in the world. And, and they can age forever. Um, now, uh, we've got time, I think, for a few questions. So uh, let's see what a few have been coming through, I gather. So would you like to ask me a question, Christian? What was the inspiration behind the cube, Chester? So the inspiration is uh, that uh, our label names are such a puzzle to work out and wine is such a puzzle to work out. I went, well, what's the most iconic puzzle? A Rubik's Cube. And then I went, oh no, I'll make it, uh, rather than having colours there, I'll put puzzles on the outside and it'll be harder, uh, which uh, I don't know whether anyone solves it. We sell them actually. You can take home a four by four uh, cube a puzzle of this and uh, and see if you can solve it. But no, no one's ever told me they can. But but so yeah, wine is such a puzzle and uh, I thought that just really represents uh, uh, our wines. And, and we have crazy names throughout all all of our wines. Uh, you know, there's another cat wine we've got called the Arthur Zagoraphobic Cat. Um, the uh, the fear of being uh, forgotten. I told yeah, that's right. You saw it already. Uh, we won't go into that. Let's have another question. How long did the cube take to build? I think uh, the cube took uh, three years to build. Really, uh, two years of the shell and structure and the facade, and then a year of uh, of the internal fit out. So not too bad, really, for a five story building. I reckon. Although it's really not quite finished. The pattern is it's still going on the roof, and uh, it's been open for a couple of years, and and uh, and the the patterns being put on there now. So so sooner or later we'll have an opening party when the full pattern's on the top. If Another someone question. wanted to spend a full day at Darrenberg. What could they do? We actually get a lot of people coming here spending the whole day. They arrive at 10 o'clock. They spend an hour going through all the art. You can download the app and listen to all of what each art piece is about, or you can read it, whichever way you want. You can go home and do that too when you're on your, on your phone. Um, and then uh, they'll, uh, they'll go into a blending class uh, of your blending of dead arm or, or just uh, looking at uh, uh, single vineyard wines or varietals, those sorts of things. And then have lunch uh, and uh, and spend a few hours at lunch and then uh, go and have a new, few more tastings, buy a few bottles of wine, have a look at the other art pieces I mentioned, the sculptures and other art galleries, and then get picked up at five o'clock because you don't really want to drive after that. Um, but of course, um, you can come down here and just spend a, a smaller amount of time in the Darren Cube if you like, and then go off and do a lot of other things too. There are 120 wineries in McLaren Vale, a lot of distilleries, uh, beer uh, breweries, uh, the beaches are fantastic, they're really beautiful because this is a Gulf of St Vincent, it's actually quite mild, the sea here, so it's quite safe and you can drive on the sand, it's pretty cool. Um, the, uh, the, there's a lot of other things, you can obviously play golf, there's uh, a lot of Airbnbs on the coast here to stay in, beautiful houses along the coast and there's actually a whole heap of hotels going in. And we're only about 35 minutes from Adelaide, so really beautiful uh, 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 to be so close to Adelaide. Uh, so you can just pop in for a day and go back to Adelaide if you really want. We want you to stay the night. Someone's doing the lawn. That would normally be my father, actually. He's 93 years old, still does the lawn mowing, still comes into work every day. So who says Darrenberg won't keep you living long? I think, I think it's the best cure. I went three days without actually having a drink just recently. First time for quite a while since we've been in this COVID sort of condition. And uh, I got gout at the end of it. Well, how does that make sense? So I hopped into the booze last night and my gout's clearing up. So I don't know. I, I, I think I was genetically built to drink. I think that's what my father says anyway. Um, yeah, so another, another question. Do you have a favourite wine of all the wines you make? There's a lot of them. There's a lot of wines, 76 wines. My favourite wine. Um, um, look, um, 
I love making the old bloke and three young blondes because um, it's obviously the pinnacle of what we make. It has uh, the oldest vines and the most uh, flavoursome Shiraz grapes for the most terroir, most age-worthy. And we ferment these old vines, uh, grapes with Marsan, Roussan and Viognia white grapes that are from younger vines, hence the old bloke and three young blondes. Also, I'm an old bloke and I've got three daughters, uh, two of them permanently blonde and the other one's occasionally blonde. Uh, go on. We did have someone asking for the story behind the name, but what's the story behind the dead arm name? The dead arm name, yeah. So the dead arm is uh, named that because when you drink too much of this wine, you'll pass out and wake up lying on your arm and it'll be numb, so you won't be able to move it. Uh, well, that's part half of the name. The other half is it's a, a fungus that gets into the pruning cuts of the vine, kills off half the vine. So all the roots are still working on just one little tiny bit of the vine and you're getting all this earth flavour, all this uh, soil flavour into the grapes. And, uh, and so uh, it's and, uh, less stress, there's beautiful uh, water. Uh, you know, it's got more water available to that little bit. So we have to every 20 or 30 years go through and chop off the dead arms off the vines so that, uh, and put up a new arm so it doesn't move through the whole trunk and kill the whole vine off. Because uh, we have many, many old vines, a lot of 100-year-old vines, 50-year-old vines. So yeah, it's really, uh, really uh, beautiful uh, uh, vineyards to work with. And can people get Derenberg wines all over the world? We sell wine to 80 odd countries around the world. Uh, uh, everything but two states in the USA, uh, uh, all over China. We can, you can, when you visit here, we can actually send wine to you in China or in America or in England and other places as well. Uh, you can just taste it here and, and then our agents will deliver it to your house when you get back when you're, when you're ready for it. And, uh, but uh, yeah, we're, we're quite well uh, distributed around the world. Where did the famous red stripe come from? Oh yes, yeah, yeah the red stripe. So uh, this comes from uh, uh, my father back in the uh, 50s uh, said to a local winemaker, a Seaview winery, uh, what do I do about developing a, a label? Um, and uh, Ben Chafee said, oh, well, um, you need something distinctive. I've got a seagull on my label, and that's very really distinctive. And I thought, seagull on your label? That's not very nice. They crap everywhere. Anyway, uh, but uh, the, uh, uh, Dad came up with the red stripe because his uh, school was red and white colours. The stripe, uh, the crest has a, a stripe in it as well. And uh, and he thought, oh, that's a, that's a good idea. And, uh, and it is a pretty good idea. It's very distinctive. We've never got rid of it. And we're just emphasising it more and more as, as we're going into modernising our labels now and then. No more questions. Well, enjoy the rest of the tourism uh, uh, stint that you're doing. Uh, we'll be ready and waiting for you. Uh, start booking in. We'll uh, we'll be here. Uh, 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 Adelaide is a great place for uh, for come and visit because uh, we have, uh, within 20 minutes there's a lot of nature. You can go see kangaroos and koalas, and massive trees. Uh, we're at, as I mentioned, only 40 minutes roughly from the uh, centre of Adelaide down here, and uh, you can see a lot of. Uh, tasting rooms here. There's actually 200 tasting rooms within one hour's drive of the centre of, uh, of Adelaide and uh, and the beaches, everything, a lot of restaurants, 47 restaurants down here as well. So yeah, it's a great place to come and visit. Uh, so we hope to see you soon. Cheers. Thank you for listening.